great day, incredible. As Chris had mentioned, the, the annual business uh, meeting for the church and the attendance was incredible. Um, well done, buddy. Uh, so without further ado, we'll jump into this. We have five baptisms. Um, they uh, are coming to this to give their public testimony and their uh, faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They are saved uh, already. Uh, they, this is a, a, a commitment that they are giving to you publicly for a number of reasons. One, it is commanded, Christ commanded, be baptized. So they're doing that and, and uh, being obedient. But also to witness and testify to you guys that, that they, need, they, they need you to come alongside and be brothers and sisters in Christ with them. Um, help them walk this uh, journey of sanctification as a believer. And so they're asking for that and giving their public testimony in doing this. These waters are magical, but they do represent our, our death, burial, and resurrection in Christ. The washing of sin as, as they go under the water and then out of the water in the new life and the new heart. That's already happened, but this is a represent, representation of that. And so with that, we will... Good morning, I'm Slate Mason. Hello to my family of believers. There is no greater honor than to speak for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we stand on hallowed ground, each of us brought to this place in God's perfect timing. The first time I came to KBC was Easter Sunday, 2022. Sharon Pollard invited me as her guest. I had no idea that what I had, I had no idea that what I heard that day would transform my life. Pastor Chris began to speak about Matthew 28, 1 through 10, and asked the hardest question ever posed. Are you a faithful resurrection witness? In that moment, my spirit was convicted. I faced my deepest failure. No, I had not spoken for, for the one who died for me. I wasn't consumed with guilt or paralyzed by remorse, although perhaps I could have been, could have been. But rather, I was born again, rejuvenated in knowing that I would spend the rest of my days speaking the truth about Jesus and his love for us, of the sacrifice he made so I could be free from sin and death. I am not worthy, but I am washed anew. Amen. 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 It's like because of your profession in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you as a sister in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. teenager, I knew who God was, but like many, I was rebellious. I thought I knew best. Um, by the time I went to college, I'd almost completely stopped pursuing any form of relationship with Christ. I was solely focused on my own desires. Uh, and then when I was 18 years old, uh, God gave me a wake-up call. I had a uh, rollover accident when I went home from college. It uh, broke my back, punctured along, collapsed it, and left me paralyzed, and it killed me on the scene. And I uh, I was saved by CPR and first responders, but uh, some of the best neurosurgeons in the world told me I would never walk again. Uh, anyways, through all that, I thought that because of my first 18 years of life, I was strong and I could do anything I wanted by my own means. I thought I would make myself walk again, and I thought I would, I would heal myself, but uh, time proved that that was vain, and uh, Christmas Eve of 2013 was the first time I ever set aside my pride truly and prayed to God with an open heart. And I asked that uh, I couldn't do it myself, and I asked for him to help me. And uh, 10 minutes later, I moved my toes for the first time in three months. And then uh, three months later, I was learning to stand again. And then five months later, I was learning to walk with crutches, and today, I. 
I walk with a limp, and it's a good reminder of what I've gone through. And, but uh, sadly, after that, though, I became angry with my limitations again, and I blamed God for what had happened to me. Because of my anger, I turned away, and I spent probably in my immediate years after living my life, serving myself again, and my own desires, and I was a pretty miserable person to be around. I wasn't fun, I can tell you that. Um, during this time, my life was consumed in sin, and deep down, I knew that the things I was doing were wrong, but uh, instead of facing those, I just numbed myself through drugs and alcohol. And the cycle continued until I became more disgusted with the way I was living until the last January, I finally reached my tipping point in my life. And I just didn't even want to look at myself anymore. Um, I felt convicted of my sinful ways and the way I was living my life, and in my heart I knew I needed to change. And I realized the only way that I could change and turn my life around was to pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ, though I had abandoned that eight years prior. I began again pursuing this relationship, and I put aside my own wants and desires and started asking him to lead my life and taking where he wanted me to go. He put it on my heart to come back to church, and though it took a little while, I began regularly attending KDC this January. And uh, it didn't take long, and I knew I was supposed to become more than just a visitor. Since I turned to Christ and away from my own ways, I've quit drinking. I haven't touched drugs. I've become a better son and brother to my parents and sisters and a more godly man. A better person to be around, and now I don't hate myself when I look in the mirror. And uh, so I no longer seek to serve my own desires, but my new desire to serve Christ and continue growing my relationship with Him. And that is why I'm here today. Christ is your Lord and Savior. I baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. taking me and my siblings to church, and I even went to Awanas where I memorized John 3.16. Even though seeds were planted, it wasn't until six years ago I truly made Jesus the ruler of my life. I was highly influenced by games growing up. I had the sin of drunkenness, fornication during my high school years. Afterwards, I had a 15-year drug addiction with crystal meth. It's something I had to have. I gave it my all. I devoted time, energy, money to it. All I was doing was feeding my fleshly desires. I didn't care if I hurted people while getting it. I had the mindset of helping, the mindset of either you're helping me get it or get out of my way. Uh, I brought sadness and anger to my family and friends because of my selfish behaviors. Meth brought so much evil, it made me violent with a short temper. I was committing crimes like commercial burglaries, <clears throat> getting in high-speed chases uh, with stolen cars. I even made it to the LA News Channel 9 and 11 for stealing a police patrol unit. I've been sent to prison four uh, different times, but the worst thing of all is that I lost custody of my daughter in the family court. That hurt it the most. Thank God I have a loving family to step in and bring her into their home. After many years of rebelliousness in 2016, I came to a point where I wanted to stop the cycle of going in and out of prison. My sister at this time told me that you're not going to see your daughter anymore because you're all jacked up. And I knew she was right. I tried very hard to stop using after she said that, just to show her and everyone I could get sober if I wanted to. But I came to realize I had no power over this demon addiction and that I was under its control. It had a grip on me and it was frightening. So on August 2016, I was driving and I cried out, uh, cried out to God with tears in my eyes and I slammed my fist hard against the dashboard of my car. And with a broken heart, I said, God, take these desires of wanting to get high. I wanna know Jesus more. That day I believed in my heart and my mind that it was only God who can transform me and make me a new person. So after praying 
A week later from that, on August 28, 2016, my prayers were answered. The Lord sent the police in my path to arrest me. I was arrested for the second time for the possession for sales. I had an ounce of meth in my possession. I was mad at first. I knew I was going to go away for a couple of years, but I realized that it was a blessing. I was going to push the restart button in my life and I'll get out sober. But instead of doing time behind bars, which normally happens, the court granted me the opportunity to enter a men's residential faith-based program called Teen Challenge of Riverside, where I lived for a year and a half. This started the beginning of my new life in Christ. There I studied and memorized scriptures, which I continue to do today. There I would print out John MacArthur, MacArthur's sermons and read them. Today I continue to listen online. After graduating the program, I became a staff member where I worked for three years. I worked with the courts, probation officers, family members to get men into the program to have a foundation in Christ and on the Bible. I worked in the community to bring drug awareness to high schools and bring the message of the power of Christ to deliver. Since then, I became an overseer of a men's Christian accountability home called the Galatians House, which houses about 24 to 30 Christian brothers. Last year, I received my state, California state credentials as a drug and alcohol counselor. But overall, I stand before you with a clear conscience today and sincerity and honesty that I have truly repented of my sins and confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Amen. Amen. Christ is your Lord and Savior. I baptize you as a brother. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Kevin Roger. Uh, since I was raised in a Bible-believing family, I've always been in a church and around church-going people. It is hard to say when it all happened. On the flip side of that, I also was well, I also went to public school, so I was exposed to the secular side of the coin. I tried for a long time to mesh these two things together the best I could. I have prayed the sinner's prayers multiple times. I remember doing so when I was 10, then again at age 15, and then again at 17, and again at 18 and 20. This has continued throughout my life, although the change most likely took place at age 17. It was not until the age of 35 that I felt I knew for sure. After looking around for well, answers to some of the questions I had, I finally realized those answers would not come, would not, and could not come from anywhere other than to Jesus Christ. I am now confident I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. this church for 20 years this month. I moved to Kerrville in August of 2002. This is bad. <laughs> Newly divorced with my two sons, True and Alex, who were one and two and a half at the time, to start rebuilding my life. David and Kathy Vineyard, my aunt and uncle, 
We're active members of this church, so we have KBC as our church family and maternal family meeting place as soon as we landed in Kerrville. I cannot remember my conversion. I was born into an extended Bible-believing Christian family. My, fam- my father died when I was barely two years old, and my mom raised my brother and I in the pews. It was scary to grow up without a human dad, so naturally I searched the scriptures and found God's promises for my life and his word. In Psalms, I learned that God is a father to the fatherless, and I believe from my earliest memories that gave me an edge, and it did. Your human dad might be amazing, but mine was flawless, the literal epitome of love, and has never failed to show up in my life when I needed him most. Being called by the Father is a crucial tenet of our faith. Salvation doesn't happen without being called by the Father, convicted of our condition by the Holy Spirit, as, who knows, <laughs> broken, broken humans unable to right our wrongs apart from Jesus Christ. But we don't stop being called to action by God at salvation. That is where our relationship with God begins. As a child and persistently through my adult life, I am fearful of being called out by God. In the Bible, when God called Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Samuel, they all responded, here I am. What guts? I lived in fear of that, this moment. Not wanting the persecution that inevitably comes with following Christ. Still, I know that obedience is the only acceptable answer when God calls you out of darkness and enlists you in his army. For reference, see the Bible. It's on every page. (laughs) If there is a drawback in not remembering your conversion, it may account for why I'm standing before you today. These last three years have crystallized my beliefs, have deeply matured my faith, and most of all have convicted me of my disobedience and my reluctance to live a public and authentic relationship with God. So here's my promise to you as my eternal family in Christ. When you see me, know that I share your perspective and that everything is a spiritual battle. And I'm taking it to the Lord and doing my absolute best to follow him. Here I am. Faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you as a sister in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, what a wonderful time uh, we get to witness and hear these testimonies. Father, we just pray for everyone who has uh, stood here today and testified to your glory and their uh, Savior, Jesus Christ, that you would, uh, from this day, give them more strength, more boldness to carry out the Great Commission, uh, spreading the word and the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, Father, we pray that you would bless our time together today to be worshipful and glorious to you. And we pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.